Okay, folks, welcome back. And in this video, we want to take a quick tour of the web-based interface for the free IPA identity server. And here we're on the free IPA client machine that we set up in the previous video. And you can see in the resolve.conf that I've already configured it to point to the free IPA server as its DNS server. That's something we did as part of the process for setting up the client. So we can come over here on our web browser and you can see that because this machine is pointing to the free IPA server as its DNS server, we could just go ahead and access the free IPA identity management web page just by entering the fully qualified domain name of that free IPA server. So let's go ahead and log in. We'll log in with the admin username. And notice too, we can use either username and password or we can set up for a one-time password or we can set up to authenticate via Kerberos. But uh, in order to authenticate via Kerberos, you need to configure the browser in order to handle that. So uh, we're not going to do that right now. We're just going to go ahead and log in via username and password via the normal way. And now you see our interface for our identity management. And uh, you see here that we now have active users right here. And you can see the different things that we can do here. We can go ahead and add a user. Let's go ahead and do that. And let's add Caitlin. And Caitlin just happens to be my little calico kitty. And we'll just go ahead and enter a password for her. And so we'll just go ahead and add her, and she is there. So now when Caitlin goes to log in, she will be able to do so. And because we use the option switch when we install the client to automatically create home directories for the users, any time that Caitlin logs into a machine that is a member of this free IPA domain, her home directory will automatically get created for her. So let's go ahead and try that. Okay, so here we are now back at the login screen for our CentOS virtual machine, our client. So let's go ahead and we'll click on not listed since Caitlin is not listed here. And we'll type in her username. And next, and the password. And hopefully, she will log in correctly. Well, she would, except the default setting of free IPA is to force the users to change their passwords upon their first login. So we're going to have to enter her current password. And now the new password. And you may have seen it. You had to look real quick to see it. But it momentarily flashed a message that we were creating a new home directory for Caitlin. And you just heard the KDE login music there. If you're wondering why I'm using KDE desktop instead of the standard GNOME desktop, it's just because the KDE fits into my recording area better. So it gives us a little bit better recording. So let's go ahead here and 
Let's open up a command line. We can go into the home directory. And we can see that indeed we do have Caitlin's home directory there. And we have it. So it worked successfully. And now after having logged Caitlin out, you can see that her login name now shows up on the login screen. When Caitlin logged in, you may have noticed that she was not using the Bash shell. She was just using the plain old SH shell. And that's because we did not configure that as her default setting when we created her account. So to do that, we just go back here to the active user screen and we'll click on Caitlin. And you can see that there's a lot of stuff we can do here. We can change her identity settings over here. We can create a Kerberos setup for her and we can create public keys for her and we can set her up to use Radius authentication if we have a Radius server on the network. And we can also enter her contact settings and her employee information. But what we want to do right now is just come up here where we have her default login shell settings and we're going to change that from the bin sh to bin bash. I don't know why free IPA defaults to using the bin sh like this, but we'll just change that to bin bash. And then we'll come back up here and we'll click on save. And now the next time that Caitlin logs in, she'll be using the bash shell instead of the bin sh. Now, besides just adding and managing users with your free IPA, there's a lot more that you can do with it. You can, of course, add user groups and add members to the user groups. And we see here that we already have some default groups that get set up when we install the free IPA. We can also define policies. We can define host-based access control policies. We can create our pseudo policies from here. We can create SE Linux user maps. We can modify and create our different password policies here. So here we have the global policy, which is going to apply to all users that we create. And we can just configure that however we want. So that means no more messing around with the PAM configuration files or anything like that. And we can create Kerberos ticket authentication policies. We can also set up our authentication in different ways, but uh, here we're just using the default setup of doing our certificates that we created when we installed the free IPA. We can look at our network services and we can see there that we have the auto mount service and we have the DNS service here. And the auto mount service is for if you want to set up a network file system shared directory and just use that as your centralized home directories for the users. And then we can come over here and click on the IPA server. And you can see there that we can create and manage the different roles with our role based access control. So there's an awful lot that you can do with free IPA. There's a lot more to it than what we can go into in this brief presentation. But if you want to know more about free IPA, just come over here to the Red Hat website and they have here the full documentation on the free IPA. They don't call it free IPA in here for some reason. I don't know why. They just call it identity management, but it's still the same thing. You can print this guide out. It's a very, very long guide, but when you get into it and start studying it and just playing around with it, you should see that it's really not that difficult to understand and it's not that difficult to figure out. 
Okay, that pretty much does it here for the introduction to our free IPA web-based interface, and I thank you for watching.